Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so I have re received a lot of questions during the last days uh, regarding uh, how do I do the how do I do the you know the bus the back uh, booster landing stuff and how can I land several boosters at the same time? Um, so yeah, I think it will be useful for all of you guys that are interested in doing this crazy stuff. How do I do it? And what do you need to do it? So the very first thing that you are going to need is the uh, custom custom medjep uh, mod that I have. I during the last uh, couple of years I, I did some contributions to to medjep to to support this stuff, but there's still there is some pending things that I haven't tried to 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 yeah. To integrate into the official media to GitHub, basically because they are very very <laughs> crazy stuff that I usually just do for myself. So, so I, I, I'm not completely sure if it's worth it to, for the most part of the, the KSP users. Okay, anyway, let me let me show you the stuff that I have been doing. So you need uh, Medjeb and smart parts, and then you need to to add a bunch of smart parts to each booster. And I'm going to go through the process of explaining you the th how do I do the, this crazy stuff. So usually what I do is I I let a smart parts a smart parts to manage the whole let's say staging by themselves. So I have for example here. Uh, let me show you is here. Yeah, it's one in one of the boosters. What I have, I have the very the very first let's say uh, stage that is going to be triggered. And this is going to happen when the liquid fuel is about 20%. So this will trigger like a staging, and it will move from the fourth stage to the third one. And and this is enough. Okay, this is the very first thing that I I have to do. Okay, so we have in one of the boosters one small part to trigger the staging basically. Okay, and th when this happens, we have uh, well. The normal stuff that you will expect. Uh, so here we have some sepatrons here, solid sepatron one here, and we have the radial decoupler here. And then this is when when it's going to get interesting. We have here we have uh, two timers that they are going to be triggered after after the, the coupling the boosters and the very first one is I, I, I activate the RCS of, on all the, the boosters at the very same time and here in the RCS what I'm doing as well and setting down all the engines for, for the boosters to not you know uh, waste the, the remaining fuel that we have and then I have a here uh, an action from a jeep that you're not going to find on on the standard uh, medjeb that is going to try to set the target automatic landing okay and what is this about so if I go to the to the core to the avionics module let's say you will find here something that you're that is yeah, it's something uh, very. Um, it's, it's something that I added to Medjet basically. You will see here that there is a landing latitude and landing lo longitude. And what what is this? Is basically uh, an option to um, to set your latitude and longitude, and basically to set where where do you want to land, where, which are the coordinates, okay? Um, and you can I I don't know why. And this is quite funny. As you see here, I have a, a button to, to set your landing lati latitude and longitude, but I, I don't know why I cannot see it right now. It's quite strange. Quite strange, I don't know why. It's quite strange. I don't know why it's going on. Let me open a different one. Yeah, here here it is. I don't know why it's not in the other one. It's quite strange. Let me let me go back and try to load it again. Uh, 
I say, oh, okay, now here it is. I don't know what is what is going on there. Okay, so as you should see here this this button here, and if you click, you will be able to write or to change basically to set the latitude and long, uh, longitude. And what I do is, in order to get these coordinates, uh, you can go. Uh, if you don't know my Jeff, there is an option. Um, actually, let me let me show you because it's very easy to do it. But, Okay, let's, let me load this vessel that I have here. Yeah, this video is maybe it's going to be a bit longer than than expected, but I had to hold, I had to do a deep dive and explain you everything because otherwise it can be quite tricky. Um, if you go here in Majeb, you have something very useful that is the surface info and you will find here the coordinates the current coordinates for this vessel right uh, what I usually do if I, I go with just yes, a, a mock-up vessel I mean whatever you want I, 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 I put the vessel wherever I want to to land the boosters then I grab the I take the coordinates I, I write them down and I and you're going to need this is our the um, you're going to need the decimal uh, coordinates so you need to translate this into decimal coordinates and if you Google it yeah uh, you're going to find that there are already, there are several pages uh, there yeah they has a like a translator for for the coordinates so you need the decimal coordinates okay but now if I go back to the space center. Now, now that you have the coordinates, you should go to to Google. Um, I, I I will write down in the video description the a web page that I use for for this purpose. And now, if I load again the my Starship LH <laughs> version, <clears throat> okay. So now let's say that. You already have the coordinates, as I do. As you can imagine, I did this six times, okay, because I had six six boosters um, with different coordinates. Um, so yeah, you can go here. You can put your coordinates, step and close. Uh, that's it. And you're done. Uh, now let's continue. So here, as you remember. We were talking about the RCS and the set automatic target landing. So this is going to, to okay. This is going to to take the this is going to take the coordinates. This is also going to take a, 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 the previous error calculation, and I will talk about this later. But there is um, every time that you try to load using my image, app, every time that you try to 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 land in a specific point uh, place with this uh, method that I'm talking about. You're going to generate an error uh, if you you know uh, you miss the landing point, so it's going to calculate an error vector, and it will store that error vector in a file that is called automatic landing data. If you go to my um, folder, you will see all the error vectors that you have stored there, and it will account for that error in the next uh, landing. Okay. So here, when you set the automatic landing, it will take the landing latitude and longitude that we just set plus whatever error vector you have stored from previous iterations or landings, let's say, and it will calculate a new, uh, yeah, it will it will calculate a new like landing uh, position uh, for for this landing. Okay, so we have set the automatic landing. Now, if I go to the next one, you see that the next timer that is going to be, be triggered is this one. And it will happen eight seconds after after the, the coupling. It will trigger the action group one. If I go to the action group, group group one, what I see here is what it's doing here. It's basically setting the target automatic landing again. This is just for because sometimes I don't know why. I don't know if uh, because yeah I don't know what if it's bug is a case bug or whatever. But sometimes it seems that it's missing to set the landing the target automatic landing. So just in case, I, I do it again. And you will see here that it's triggering a 
a different action that this time is to land at KSC. But it's not going to land at KSC. It's going to land to the coordinates that you, you set here, okay? To these landing coordinates. So you are basically overriding the landing vector, let's say the landing yeah, the landing vector for, for my chip. So it's going to try to land. And now this time, because I am activating the, the engines as well, now it's going to actually begin the, the backbone to, to to whatever position you, you set. Okay? So I am activating the engines and landing at KC. And the reason why I, I set this to eight seconds is because I prefer to give it some time to actually, you know, do the, the whole flip or the boosters. Do the whole flip and then I there is some space between them and then I I begin with doing the, the burn. Okay. Okay. Let's continue then. Now as you can see here I don't have any more timers. So now I know so everything is triggered by just altimeters and I have different like events. So at 70 kilometers uh, descending I triggered action group 3. The action group 3 is actually going to shut down all the engines. I don't want to because I don't want my jet to, to start. If you know my jet is going to try to to start like decelerating the the, the vessel basically. It will calculate a specific uh, speed, and if you are uh, over that, that that speed, you will try to to decelerate the the vessel, and in this case, waste fuel. So I don't want that to happen. Uh, so in 70 kilometers, I deactivate, I shut down all the engines, and I extend the air brakes. As you can see here, I'm not using the fins, the grid fins. The reason why I'm not using them is because, first of all, they they the drag is very low. And I don't want. I, I prefer a higher drag for for the boosters when entering the atmosphere. Let's say the dense the dense part of the atmosphere, and also the grid fins. Uh, you can beach yo and different stuff. And yeah, a midship doesn't like that at all. So I just remove the. I not using the grid fin at all, and I just using the standard air brakes. By the way, I am using far here on this video. So yeah. Um, then the next step is going to be at 50 kilometers. I trigger the action group four. If I go to the action group four now, I am activating the engines because it's time for for my jet to yeah. Now now it's time for a real deceleration. The the the, the entry bar, let's say. You can go for 60 kilometers. I, 60 is actually the I think is the real thing, the real value when you see the Falcon 9 uh, streaming. I think they start actually beginning the entry bar at 60 kilometers and they end up as something like 30 kilometers and you will see that actually like, that that's fine. I mean 30 kilometers is, is completely fine to do the next step that is is to finish. The, I am forcing to finish the entry bar by just uh, setting down the engines. And finally, at nine kilometers, yeah, you need to you need to choose here the specific. Yeah, it really depends on the on the design of your booster, basically. But you can go as low as a four, for example, or five, six, depending on the drag that you have and the and the speed that you have at this altitude. I trigger the action group six, and here what I'm doing is. I'm triggering the action land somewhere, and you will see in, this is already in Medjeb, the land somewhere. Um, why? And you, you may be asking, why are you doing this? Why don't you just let uh, Medjeb to land, uh, to use the land at KSC? The reason why I do this is because, yeah, I don't know why, but Medjeb doesn't really work fine when you try to land at a specific place. It, it seems that it's trying to stay like at 500 meters in altitude and then doing like uh, some adjustment and trying to land. I don't know why, but it doesn't. I mean, in reality, it doesn't work like that. Right? I mean, I, I would expect to do a like a suicide burn and at a, and a specific place, but that, that doesn't happen, right? So I I use the land somewhere, and the land somewhere basically will it, it works fine, and. And given that you are already like taking into account your landing error um, vector, 
yeah, it's land somewhere, I would say, somewhere close to that point, right? But it's not perfect, I, I mean, it's not perfect at all, but it's much better than if you try to land uh, at KSC or a specific coordinate, it's not going to work at all. So yeah, and just changing the, the method, of the landing method to land somewhere um, and activating the engines to, to perform the landing. And that's all, that's all. There is one thing that I, looking at the at all the stuff that I have been doing, I, I, there is something that I completely forgot, actually. There is a, yeah, there is this method that I added that is not error set automatic landing. And what is this, what it's going to do, it's going to try to, to avoid taking into account the error landing vector. And do you think, well, when, when is the, why, why is this useful at all? I mean, why do I need this? So I'm going to actually try, but I, I will not do it here on the video, I will uh, just do it offline, but I think if, when I know that I am already like descending and looking down uh, retrograde, I can go here to here to this action group 3 and set this no error cell automatic target landing and this will actually w work better I think because at this point the let's say the back burn has already happened so that means that I, am, I, I have been already burning enough or yeah to take into account the error landing vector so now at this point I should not use the the point the you know the the I should just use the the real coordinates where the landing should happen instead of the landing coordinates with the offset the offset yeah so I should try this because I think it should work actually better I will do the next time like this um, and that's all guys I think with all the information that I just gave you should be should be enough to for you to to accomplish this this thing. Let me know in the comment below if uh, yeah if you manage to do it or if you have any kind of problems or is there is something that you are missing. And that's all, guys. I hope you have a nice day.